Ah, yes, the bayou. I remember our visit in the case of The Awakened. Is that so, Dark Mage Watson? After three games ranging from excellent to... okay, we now reach what I consider to be peak Sherlock Holmes regarding video games. Crimes and Punishments was a birthday gift I got when it initially came out. For playing it years later, it's still my favorite Sherlock Holmes game. Like The Awakened and Nemesis before it, Crimes and Punishments is an adventure game where players take control of the cunning Sherlock Holmes, as he and Dr. Watson investigate a string of crimes. The mysteries themselves are episodic and bear no connection with each other, so there's nothing you really have to remember throughout the cases. There's a bit more to it, but that summarizes the plot. So, how does this game stand out? For one, the presentation outdoes the previously reviewed games. Don't get me wrong, I still say the Awakened remake, compared to the original, has some of the best graphics and atmosphere. But that game has a lot of polish, probably too much compared to this. You may say Crimes and Punishments looks a bit grainy at times, especially with the outdoor areas, but I think it adds to the overall style. This game has aged so well, and it shows. Across most cases, there are two locales you will frequent. One is Baker Street, where you will conduct experiments, search the archives, compliment the dog, and... Look at the large lady. Why? For some reason, you can't go outside the apartment and explore anymore. It takes us to the map if we try. Why? Then there's Scotland Yard, where you'll look at evidence, interrogate suspects, or perform autopsies. And you can see that Holmes learned a trick or two from Dark Mage Watson. At one time, you can even look inside Lestrade's office. Interesting hobby. Besides those two, all the cases have unique and detailed crime scenes. A small cozy cabin in the forest, train terminals in the countryside, and even a Roman bathhouse, among many others. It's not as mystifying or outlandish as The Awakened, or as large in scope as Nemesis, but it is mainly grounded and adds variety. Not to mention, the character models have much more detail. For example, look at the detective duo. Holmes's stubble, disheveled hair, and even the pronounced bags under his eyes show how dedicated and somewhat manic he is. You know, when he's not shooting up the apartment. Holmes. In contrast, Watson's much cleaner and more civic in appearance. Character models look like they have had much more care put into them especially when compiling their profiles. I've recently felt that the Awakened stumbled somewhere with the characters. Playing through crimes and punishments, I figured it out. Many of Awakened's characters look way too smooth. Even when Holmes starts to develop a beard and bags, he still looks like he has stage makeup on. Others do have detail, but they're either not very pronounced or somewhat faded. In contrast, Crimes and Punishments characters are more organic. The peeling skin of somebody's fingers, subtle scars, even the pores on somebody's skin. Even with the more plainer models, there are details that make you think, wow, did the developers model these after actual human beings? What I'm trying to say is that it's one thing to make a character look polished. It's another when all or most of them have gotten a wax job. Something I also noticed is the facial animations. Looking back at The Awakened, I still say that expressions are nil, but there's more to it than that. Everyone is very rigid, not really emoting or moving that much. Now look at characters in Crimes and Punishments. Their eyes could be darting when in fear or suffering peer pressure. Subtle smiles are occasional, and certain characters have frowns that detail their personality or act as a tell during a minigame. How they're moving, even when stationary, adds an element of natural spontaneity. It's not much, but it's better than the Awakened remake. I understand that Frogwares doesn't have the budget of a AAA company, and it's obvious that their priorities are more on the gameplay and story. But there's something to be said for the graphical production of a game that came out in 2014 versus a more recent title. Moving on, the ambiance is the highlight when it comes to sound. Whether making Scotland Yard sound busy, chirping birds and wisps of wind caught by the trees, or even a roaring river surrounding an ancient temple. 
These are what make each location more or less distinct from one another. However, the sound mixing gets in the way of the music. When I could hear it, most tracks were only used as background, or to heighten tension and suspense. Railway post bags. It's a shame because the music was outsourced to Kevin McAleod, who I recognize since I used one of his tracks for my theology versus demonology analysis. Knowing this, I wanted to enjoy the music, but most were reused and either subdued or obliterated by the level's ambiance. It's a minor complaint, but noticeable. The voice work is pretty good and conveys the characters Sherlock fans will know and love. For example, Holmes is unorthodox, but respectful when he needs to be. My condolences, Mrs. Carey. Good day to you. We are investigating the disappearance of last night's train, and we should like to ask you a few questions. Clones? Where have all these wretched bees come from? I increased the temperature of the room so as to prevent them from hibernating. I needed to take a sample of honey. But it worked, Watson. We will have honey all year round. Watson is more somber, but still the voice of reason when Holmes does something destructive, while supporting him in his work. Don't tell me that you did this to yourself. Hemlock and the Tura. I was compelled to. Holmes, imagine if I'd not returned home when I did. What might have happened? <laughs> I knew that you would. Tell me, my friend, what is the animal closest to man? Morphologically, I mean. Ah, I see what you're getting at, Holmes. You asked me that once before, on the Ripper case, I believe. Do you want to slit some more pig's throats? Finally, there's Lestrade, who respects Holmes' abilities, but is so sure of himself. Admit that for once, Mr. Holmes, Scotland Yard is a step ahead of you. Dude, you've been proven wrong multiple times. Be thankful Holmes lets you take the credit. Other characters you talk to or question make the experience a genuine mystery. Like the facial expressions, the voices can communicate a lot, though not everyone makes their intention evident. Some are honest, to a point, while others can lie through their teeth. It adds to gameplay since you are trying to determine who done it. Now, to my favorite aspect of this title, the gameplay. This is what the Awakened remake and other recent games are based on, and what I've seen one or two different games take inspiration from. To start off, the game is in the third person perspective. There is an option to switch to first person, but it doesn't change anything fundamentally. You gather evidence, log it into your notebook, profile characters, etc. There's also the objectives, a map for fast traveling, a log for all the various conversations you will have, and a hybrid between an items tab and evidence, with icons for what kind of interactions they should be used for. Finding some clues requires concentration indicated by the eye icon, or reenactments with the silhouette sign. Others are obtained by doing mini-games or puzzles, such as harpooning a pig, experimenting with forensic equipment, or taking the dog out to sniff for a trail. Their difficulties range from pretty easy to somewhat complex, though Frogwares has graciously allowed a skip button if players want to get on with the mystery. Finding the clues contributes to the Mind Palace, where you connect various clues to spark ideas that either inch you closer to a resolution or indicate an event you need to do to move a possibility forward. Unlike the Awakened remake, which appears as a linear strand of brain cells, Crimes and Punishments is more like multiple neurons. You can get ideas that might connect correctly or don't. A clue can have more than one likely outcome, so even if numerous clues seem to line up perfectly, that does not mean they're absolutely correct. To that end, all the tabs in the journal feel integral, since this is not a linear investigation, but individual, open-ended cases. Re-reviewing is essential if you want to come to a proper conclusion. 
That's why, for the sake of this review, I am not delving into the stories at all. I want people who watch this review, who have never played the game before, to go and play this game blind. If you have played it, do a memory wipe, then play it. It's satisfying to figure things out on your first playthrough. I will allude to one last mechanic, which happens when you come to a conclusion. You can condemn or absolve a character, leading to different ending cutscenes. If you regret your choice, you can undo it and pick the opposite outcome. This is in line with Sherlock Holmes, since there have been cases where he lets the perpetrator go, either because he did not want to be Scotland Yard's cleanup boy, or there were factors involved that didn't merit condemnation. Before I finish, I will lodge a fun fact and minor complaints. The fun fact is something I never realized until rewatching Jeremy Brett's Sherlock Holmes. Half of these mysteries are taken from stories already written by Arthur Conan Doyle himself. One of them is technically not a Sherlock Holmes narrative, but his involvement is implied. The other half are originals. I can say that the cases that had many possible outcomes and weren't terribly linear are my favorites. So, minor critiques start with customization. It is more interwoven with the game, since Holmes does need to disguise himself in a couple of these cases. However, a couple of hairstyles I wanted are locked behind finishing the game, which I suppose is meant to add replayability, but it's not like the Awakened remake, where the collectibles have some bizarre stuff you want to try. The other criticism is partially the story, in two parts. There is an overarching plot unrelated to the cases, save for the last one. Like I said, I don't want to give any spoilers, but I will have a separate video dedicated to what I think about the overarching plot, and what I believe Frogwares was trying to do. To me, this plot should have been either more directly involved with the other mysteries, or it simply should have been its own case. That leads to part two of the story. There is, sadly, zero replayability. There are achievements I have yet to unlock, but I'm not an achievement hunter. I want to solve more cases. In fact, this game would have been perfect for DLC mysteries, adding a new one each month or more. Instead, there were sequels like The Devil's Daughter, which I did play some of, but... Well, that's a story for another day. Even if you have played Crimes and Punishments, I think I've clarified my case. This is peak Sherlock Holmes. Revisiting it, I remembered many of the correct solutions, but was sometimes torn about condemning or absolving. It was a lot more fun for my judgments to be thought out and resolved based on other factors besides he or she is the killer. It was even more fun when playing it for the first time years ago, not knowing the solutions and putting the pieces of every mystery together, or even which ones were Doyle's stories. And for anyone here who has never played the game, I can guarantee you will have the same experience. So, if you haven't, go and get the game. This is what I consider to be Frogware's golden egg, and it still rings true. Thanks for watching. As I said, my next video will be about the game's overarching story told in the background. So, subscribe or follow the channel, and hit the bell icon to avoid missing it. Leave a like if you can and a comment sharing your thoughts. Also, special thanks to VG Maestro 7 who has allowed me to use his recording equipment. I've been experimenting with voice recording on my own, but it's good to have it outsourced to somebody with more professional equipment. Plus, being able to use said equipment may lead to different types of projects in the future. It all depends on scheduling. Anyways, if you're new, welcome aboard. I'll see you in the next one. This green, grand, mystic fellow seems rather suspicious, Holmes. What should we do next, Holmes?